All right, imagine this. Mbappe wearing Cameroon's colors, Messi in Spain's jersey, or a player who straight up dumped their own country days before the World Cup to join another team. Yup, it's crazier than you think. Well, get ready to uncover these jaw-dropping betrayals that nearly cost lives. Let's start with Lionel Messi. You see, Messi could have been wearing the Spanish jersey at the World Cup back in 2010, but nope, he decided to stick with his Argentinian roots. You see, even though he was born and bred in Argentina, there's a twist. His great-grandfather hailed from Spain, and when he and his family made that life-changing move to Barcelona at the age of 13, things got interesting. FC Barcelona's club director of football, Karl Rack, was like, holy moly, this kid's the real deal. But folks, Messi stayed loyal to his Argentinian dream, and you want to know why? Because he grew up watching videos of Diego Maradona, the legendary World Cup moment, and he wanted a piece of that glory. Spain tried and tried to convince him otherwise, but Messi stood his ground, and now, with all the trophies he's bagged, you can't help but wonder if he ever looks back and thinks, did I make the right call? Crazy, right? But the next guy, he didn't even care the slightest. Yep, we're talking about Raheem Sterling. This guy? Well, he doesn't have a sweat about choosing sides. Raheem was seen hanging out with the Prime Minister of Jamaica, sipping on Hennessy and Corbusier. Sounds like a dream vacation, right? But here's the thing, he wasn't just taking a holiday in Jamaica, he was born there. Yeah, you heard that right. Our man Raheem spent his early years with his mum on the beautiful island of Jamaica. But here's where things take a dark turn. His father, a member of a gang, tragically got murdered in Jamaica when Raheem was just two years old. And his mum, determined to give him a better life, made a bold move. At the tender age of five, she packed their bags, hopped on a plane, and off they went to London. Raheem's been calling England home ever since. So when he grew up and it was time to make a choice, England came knocking. But what's interesting is that Raheem Sterling, born in Jamaica, decided to play for England. The English national team got lucky with him on their side. And while England has been chasing the elusive World Cup win for years, Jamaica is always there, a place for Raheem to kick back, soak up the sunshine and reminisce about his roots. Who could blame him, right? Next up is David Alaba. This guy is the captain of Austria, but what if I dropped a bombshell on you? He's not just from Austria, he's got some Nigerian roots too. I'm not kidding, just look at his name, David Alaturbo Alaba. Now, here's where it gets interesting. David might have been born in Austria, but his dad, well, his dad is not your typical Nigerian prince sending you emails asking for $3 million. No, his dad is a bona fide Nigerian prince, and not only that, but he was a musician. You'd think it's a movie plot, right? His royal parents sent him to study in Austria, but when his dad saw that the music game was paying more than David's studies, he straight up kicked school in the... well, you know where. To make things even crazier, his dad's songs didn't just hit a chord, they hit the number two spot in Austria's music charts. The guy even went on to release a bunch of hit singles, and guess what? His father became an Austrian citizen. As if that's not enough, his mom hails from the Philippines. It's like a wild international mix. And guess what? He could have played for the Philippines too, but here's the kicker. He pledged his allegiance to Austria back in 2009. Can you believe it? Many Nigerians out there are still heartbroken, wishing he'd pick Nigeria. Alright, next up we have someone who's a literal brand in his country. Any guesses? Yup, it's Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Who else could it be, right? I mean, in Sweden, after Ikea and Volvo, it's basically Zlatan, the man himself. But what if I told you that Zlatan could have donned a jersey for Bosnia? Or heck, even Croatia? I kid you not. While he was born in Sweden in 1981, here's the twist. His dad, Sefi Ibrahimovic, hails from Bosnia. Yeah, you heard that right. His dad emigrated to Sweden in 1977, and if that's not enough, his mom, she's from Croatia. It's like a European football cocktail. Who'd have thought? You could have bet your life savings on Zlatan being 100% Swedish, but that's why we don't gamble, folks. And when Luka Modric bagged the Footballer of the Year title in 2018, Zlatan proudly flaunted his Croatian heritage, offering congratulations. At least he doesn't have twin brothers playing for different countries, right? Now, let's talk about the man of the hour, Paul Pogba. We all know he's got that World Cup under his belt with France, but did you know, back in 2016, when he became the most expensive footballer in the world, he had the chance to pick which country he wanted to play for? I mean, you might be thinking, dude, he was born in France, so what's the deal? 
Well, hold on, Pogba's story is quite the twist. You see, his dad hails from Guinea, which muddy the waters a bit. And to make his choice even more nail-biting, Pogba has two old twin brothers, Florentine and Matthias, who'd already suited up for Guinea. Talk about a family dilemma. But surprise, surprise, Pogba decided to roll with France. What a decision, right? Personally, I think he made the right call. But hey, I'm just one voice in the crowd. What do you think? Mesut Ozil This guy had a colossal decision to make when it came to choosing which country to play for. As a little boy in Germany, growing up as the youngest of four siblings, his parents struggled to make ends meet. His dad back then was facing some real financial hardships. I mean, we're talking about a time when the unemployment rate for migrants in Germany was soaring above 70%. But guess what? Mesa didn't let adversity get the best of him. He started playing football with his brothers, but here's where it gets interesting. His brothers didn't take football in Germany seriously. Nope, they had their eyes set on representing Turkey. So you'd think Mesut would follow suit, right? But not a chance. This guy saw football as his ticket out of poverty. As the son of Turkish immigrants, he grew up in a proper Turkish family surrounded by Turkish culture. However, Mesut Ozil was willing to sacrifice everything to become one of the greatest football players that Germany has ever witnessed. I mean, look at this guy. He's got the record for the most German Player of the Year awards, clinching it a whopping five times. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? And the best part is that it doesn't mean that he's got any ill feelings towards Turkey. In fact, Ozil played at Fenerbahce on a free transfer and he's now with Istanbul. Basak Sihir. It shows that he still cherishes his roots while making it big on the world stage. Alright, here's some pure sibling rivalry guys. Jerome Boateng had a massive decision to make, play for Ghana or represent Germany. But here's the twist, his half-brother, Kevin Prince Boateng, had to make the same choice. So what did they do? They tossed a coin, of course. Kevin Prince Boateng paid to Ghana and Jerome, well, he went with Germany. Now fast forward to the 2014 World Cup in Brazil and guess who came out as the sole World Cup winner in the family? You got that right, it was Jerome Boateng. Finally, we have Diego Costa. Now, this guy has two faces. He's Diego Costa in Brazil's jersey, but then there's... There's Diego Costa in Spain's colours. Spot the differences between the two pictures, cause this story is really bizarre. Diego Costa actually played for Brazil twice in 2013 before declaring, hey, I want to play for Spain. Why? Because he was granted Spanish citizenship in the very same month. It's like he'd been waiting for that citizenship his whole life. This made Brazil's manager, Luis Felipe Scolari, furious. You see, Diego Costa, as a dual citizen of Spain and Brazil, had the power to choose both countries. But he decided to go with Spain, and it did make him a villain in Brazil. We're talking cold calculation and some serious research here. He played in two friendlies for Brazil in March 2013, but he never appeared in an official FIFA game that would have locked him in with a Brazilian team for life. Diego knew the rules and he played them to his advantage, but things took a nasty turn for him. Some folks even sent him death threats. Brazilians call him a traitor and demanded him to be stripped off his Brazilian citizenship. So here's the question for you guys, Spain or Brazil, which team would you have chosen? Do drop your views in the comment section below and we'll be back with more exciting stuff in the coming days, so you guys better stay tuned. Until then, see ya!